Motor speed control is an essential concept in automotives, especially when it comes to fans, mixers, production lines, and the list goes on. Today in this video, we are going to build a basic motor speed control system based on ULN Darlington pair array. Interfaced using STM32 microcontroller, so this video includes programming. The same application can be also used to control the volume level of a speaker or a buzzer. We have motors to control today, so get ready and let's start our video. Before diving into motors control, I want to let you know that from now on, STM32 programming sections will be included in the future videos. So if you are interested, make sure that you subscribe to Useful Electronics and turn on the notification bell so you can stay tuned. Alright, now let's carry on. The concept of DC motor control is based on chopping the supplied DC voltage and playing with the supplied on time percentage. This technique is called pulse width modulation or PWM in short. Luckily, it's possible to generate such a signal using STM32 16-bit timer channel. So we have a resolution of 65,536. Thank you, Google, for reading this for us. Anytime, homeboy. All right, that wasn't expected. Anyways, for our purpose, such an accurate resolution is not that necessary. And you will know the reason for that in just a minute. So now we need some input that we can tune to change the PWM signal on time, which will control the motor speed. And the simplest solution for such a thing is to connect a potentiometer like this configuration and read the variation in voltage using an analog to digital converter. Of course, the variation in voltage will be due to rotating the potentiometer shaft. After determining the requirements of what we are constructing, let's configure the STM32 PWM and ADC channels. First of all, we need to configure the reset clock control by selecting the high speed clock. Now, when coming to the clock configuration, make sure that you select the right crystal frequency that you have on your board. After that, select the PLL correct source and type in the frequency that you want your system to run on. And the IDE will configure all the prescalers automatically according to your choice. Personally, I prefer to run the system at maximum speed to get the best possible performance. Alright, now it's time to configure system debug by selecting serial wire, which will allow you to program and debug using ST-Link over serial wire data and serial wire clock lines. Analog to digital converter can be easily configured by enabling any of the available channels, and no other settings are required. For the time being, I will not talk about DMA and interrupts to keep everything simple. Remember that in STM32 F103 series, the ADC is 12 bit and has a maximum input of 3.3 volt. By knowing this information, we can find the ADC resolution, which is 3.3 volt divided by 4096. This means that every 0.8 millivolt will correspond to one increment in the ADC buffer. And since the maximum possible value the ADC can generate is 4095, the timer, which will generate the PWM signal, should have a period of 4095 as well. So at that value, we should have an output close to constant DC voltage. After configuring the required peripherals, let's generate a template code. As you can see, the QBMX has generated all the peripherals configurations that we need, including system clock, ADC, and PWM timer channel. So now we can proceed to coding section. All right, so first of all, a 16-bit variable is initialized in order to store the value read by the ADC and equated to zero to prevent forming random data. Note that 8-bit variable will cause the data to overflow since the ADC returns 14-bit value. These initializations are generated by QBMX, as mentioned before, so no need to worry. To start the ADC in polling mode, HAL ADC start function is called and the channel 1 ADC handler address is passed to it. For starting generating PWM signal, 
how timer PWM start is called and both the timer to handler address and the channel that we had configured before are passed to the function. Here are the peripheral handlers initialized by Cubimix. These handlers actually make accessing peripheral registers quite straightforward. Starting from this point on, when writing a value to the capture and compare register, this value is compared with the timer period to decide on the PWM signal on time. Let's illustrate this with an example. Assume that we have filled the capture and compare register with a value of 1024. And we know that we had already written a value of 4095 to the timer period, which is stored in the auto reload register. Now the on time percentage is nothing but the ratio of the value stored in the capture compare register over the value stored in the auto reload register. This means that the PWM signal stays at logic 1 state for 25% of one complete period. Ok, let's continue with our code. Since we had started the ADC in polling mode, it's possible to detect if the ADC buffer has captured any data using HAL ADC poll for conversion, which returns 1 when there's data ready to be read. That's why this function is called inside an if statement. Both the ADC handler and a timeout value are passed to this function. The ADC value can be read using HAL ADC get value, stored and passed later on to capture and compare register and the ADC is restarted to repeat the whole process again. In short, this firmware function is to read the variation in voltage using ADC and output that variations in form of PWM signal using timer PWM channel. Note that polling method is not efficient at all. So for that, in future videos, more advanced techniques will be shared with you. So stay tuned. Alright, now let's return to our hardware implementation. To provide isolation protection to our microcontroller when deriving a DC motor, ULN Darlington pair array is used and here is the simplified version of our hardware. Remember to use a freewheeling diode parallel to the RL load in order to provide reverse voltage protection. Two Darlington pairs are used in order to distribute the motor current. This implementation is actually provided in the ULN Texas Instrument datasheet. Ok, let's build everything in practice and see how everything works together. Of course, we haven't got this wave frequency by chance. In fact, timer channel PWM signal frequency is determined by the following formula, and it is the timer clock frequency divided by the period plus one times the free scale plus one. In our case, the timer clock frequency is 72 megahertz, and the period value is 4095. The prescaler value is zero because we didn't use that parameter when configuring the timer. By doing the math, we can find the same exact signal frequency that the timer channel is generating. The exact same application can be used for dimming LEDs and controlling sound volume level. One last note for this implementation is that since all the Darlington pairs emitters are tied together at one pin in the ULNIC, it is not possible to control the motor rotation direction, which is a big disadvantage. So choose your components carefully depending on your requirements. This brings me to the end of this video. If you have learned something new, please let me know what it is in the comment section below. Tell your friends about useful electronics and thank you for being with me today. Stay tuned.